credit to Callum Smith. He went in there, he tried, and he was he was brave climbing off the canvas, and he wanted to carry on. Um, but he's definitely found his level. Every time Smith had his back on the ropes, he was in severe danger. So he's been out of the ring 18 months. That's far too long to jump in with somebody like Artur Baturbiev. I can't see a lot of motivation now for, for Callum Smith to carry on boxing. I don't think he's enjoying it now like like you should be. And I just think now if he if he hangs his gloves up, he can he can he can be proud that he's he's gave it his best shot and he's had a good career. So I wouldn't be surprised if he retired. Hello and welcome to The Verdict with myself, Carl Frotch, and my old friend, George Groves. George, how are you, mate? I am good, Carl. I'm very good. Uh, good to see you and good to start the year with a cracking bit of boxing, some high-level boxing. So Callum Smith, he gets stopped in the seventh round against Arthur Baturviev. He is a force, Carl. Uh, my verdict on the fight was that I thought Baturviev would would win. And, you know, when he wins, he stops the guy in front of him. Callum Smith hasn't boxed for 18 months and hasn't been that regular in the past few years anyway. So I had him as a heavy favourite. And really, he just showed how much of a beast he is, how much of an animal he is. He just, once he gets into range, he throws a lot of arm punches, as in it's just the weight of his arms that come flooding in. But he changes the angle of them shots, and when he starts landing, they have an effect. And yeah. almost Callum like he's landing tip tap punches, like just putting his arms out. I know what you mean. I mean, Callum Smith explained it yesterday in his post fight interview. He was touching him, just touching him with the shots and touching him with the gloves. But uh, they look like quite weighty touches, don't they? Heavy arms. <laughs> and then when he decides to plant his feet and send in the big shots, you can see the difference. Real, really grips his gum shield, and he bites down on his gum shield, puts his feet, anchors his feet to the ground, and just swings in big, heavy, hurtful shots. And um, yeah, he was raining in heavy shots when he and, um, and Callum Smith ran the chin, around the body. Was it round seven? And, uh, yeah, round seven is stopped. Dropped in it twice. Minutes. Yeah. So, I mean, Batavia starts really strong in the first round. Um, I think he just decides, I'm just going to um, land something heavy and meaty on Smith, try and put him in his place from the get-go. And he dives on him. And it looks like he has an effect for, you know, straight away. Callum Smith, super tall, you know, big, long, punches long, but also he's, he's pretty good at punching short when he does get um, close. Second round was better. I, I gave him the second round. He put he put his shot he puts his shots together nicely, Callum Smith, and he has good variety with the shots. Um, the whole way through the fight, Buddy McGirt in the corners telling him, Joe, you know, look for that left hook to the body, that left hook behind the elbow, and he had success with it, but it showed absolutely nothing on, on Baturviev you know, from, from what I was watching. You know, he so was when he was having caught. a go in round, so, so second round, when he had a go and he was landing shots and landing that counter left door, which has got a bit of meat behind it. I know Callum Smith can punch a little bit. I've done a lot of sparring with him. You've, you've obviously fought him. I mean, I know I'm not going to take anything away from his, his performance and his win, but you was injured. You was towards the end of your career. He actually retired after. Did you retire after that fight or did you retire after the U, was it the Eubank fight? No, that was the was last it? one, Carl. That, that was, was the last well, fight, yeah. yeah. So, um, I mean, I have... I have Played a bit of an interest in your career after you, um, after me and you met. But um, yeah, I can remember you fought him, but you wasn't at your best. And you, it's, it's arguable that you're actually Callum Smith's best win. If you look at his record, yeah, well, you're his, be you're his best win. I mean, unless and, you've got and, a different and, and the same can be said for you, Carl. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, potentially, <laughs> potentially, <laughs> depending on, depending yeah. on how highly you rate the other um, multiple world champions that are beaten, yeah, former yeah. Olympians and former undefeated fighters. You had, no, had a couple of names was, on your record, sure. No, it but good, um, it was a good win. I mean, I think I think Smith one of Smith's biggest problems has been like, inactivity, or just he's never got real momentum. Even since that fight with me, that's five over five years ago now. I'm glad and, you touched on that, George, because. In activity, he's had, looking back at his record, he's had six rounds as a like against a journeyman to, to sort of transition into the light heavyweight division. And that was 18 months ago. So he's been out of the ring 18 months. That's far too long to jump in with somebody like Artur Baturbiev. Now, I think, I don't know what your thoughts on that, but he's taken some really bad advice for me taking this fight at this stage of his career. I think he needed to jump in with somebody like Anthony Yard, find his feet, who's also got a defeat on his record for, to Artur Baturbiev. Um, what's your opinion on that in terms of him taking this fight after such a long layoff against somebody so dangerous? 
Well, the fight got delayed. Um, Toby have had an injury. I think he even had to have surgery. Um, so the fight got delayed, and I think it was delayed as much as four, or five, maybe even six months. So whether he tried to get a fight in the in the meantime, then that would have been great for him. But obviously, you're running the risk of um, you know underperforming, maybe even getting beat, losing your chance to fight one of the well, one definitely the biggest name in the light heavyweight division. He's got three belts. 18 uh, months out of the ring title. though, jumping in with somebody like that for me, there's still no excuse. I'm not gonna yeah. I'm not gonna fold on that. I just think it's ridiculous. And that's for me, it's bad advice. Whether or not you agree with that or not. I just wondered your take on it, really. Yeah, well, you know, and I mean it's would not everyone has the uh the beautiful career that you had, Carl, where you had uh you know, the right fights at the right time and you was fortunate enough to keep busy. Hey, and listen, I had my gaps. sometimes I had my gaps. I had my ACL reconstructed. I was six, seven months out, and I've had I've had a couple of hand um, operations. But eighteen months to then jump in with with uh, somebody like Beterbiev, I think. No, I make you right. Not, it's not ideal at all. It's, I don't, it's ever going to. I don't think it's ever going to work. Let's go to the corners decision. I mean, Buddy McGurr jumped in the ring. The fight to me looked like it was over. What was your verdict on the corner man pulling him out of the fight? Right or wrong? Yeah, no, definitely right. I was, I think, I think Smith was starting to wilt. You know, um, the round he showed a lot of bravery, like didn't he? he climbing off hurt. the canvas, he climbed yeah, off the canvas, yeah, went mean, again. He, he's boxing through and through, like so many of us are, Carl. You know, that's what he knows. He knows how to fight. He gets up. He wants to carry on. Uh, the referee, I wasn't even sure if the referee was going to stop the fight. You know, he gave him every chance, and sometimes rightly so in, in these world title fights. But uh, Buddy McGurk jumps in the ring. He doesn't want to cause a scene and maybe embarrass his fighter, but he does want to definitely bring this fight to an end. And the right decision for me there and then, Cole, because I think he was only stopping the inevitable. You know, uh, Smith was Smith looked concussed at this point, you know, he'd, and he'd, he'd already been down. He'd got up. There was no way he was going to be able to keep Paterbiev off of him and survive and get his bearings again. So, you know, he's it it only preventing the inevitable. Um, do you think the same? Yeah, I think um, I think the decision was right. I thought the referee actually was was about to wave it off. But sometimes them referees can be quite ruthless. And Smith had been dropped quite heavy. He'd gone down. He'd slumped. He'd looked like he he didn't decide to go down. It. He got punched to the ground. And then he stood up. Showed a lot of bravery. He was badly hurt. He carried on. He was still looking for that counter punch, the left hook. He was trying to time it, trying to catch um, his opponent Baturbiev as he was unloading. He's just. And it was just like. It was futile, is, is, is a sort of attempt to try and stay in the fight because he was just getting out-muscled and banged with heavy shots and he was getting hurt. You could see there were hurtful punches. And when he went down for the second time, I just thought the referee could have actually waved it off straight away and just said, look, I'm going to show a bit of compassion here and I'm just going to wave the fight. But he didn't. He started counting. I think Smith, did he get up? Did he beat the count? I think he would have beat the count. He was, he was going to climb off the canvas, but Buddy McGurk climbed through the ropes and I think the ref saw that, the towel was there, and he was like, look, fight's over. He's a very experienced Buddy McGurr, but, you know, I, I, so I'll give him credit for that. But then again, I can go back to, to where I was, where who's advising him to take this fight after an 18-month layoff? I still go back to that. I think he should have fought someone like Anthony Yard or somebody else as a stepping stone before jumping in with such an important fight as a light heavyweight. So, so where do you, that, where would you put him, Cole, in the UK scene, should we say? So we got we got Buatzi versus uh, Dan Aziz coming up soon. You've got Yard, you've got obviously Callum Smith, um, Lyndon Arthur's just been beat by by Bivol. I'm sure there's a, a one or two others who, who I've missed in the UK light heavyweight scene. Where would you put Smith now in in those rankings? It's difficult because he's definitely found his level, hasn't he? He's found his level because he's fought Canelo, but he didn't show much ambition with Canelo. I thought he was guilty of not really believing in himself. And I put that out last night on my social media. I said, look, if Callum Smith believes in himself, he's got a chance. I didn't say he's going to win. I just said he's got a chance. Because if he, he gets in the ring with no belief, he's got no chance at all. And I thought he did get in there with belief and he did try. So credit to Callum Smith. He went in there, he tried. and He was, he was brave climbing off the canvas and he wanted to carry on. Um, but he's definitely found his level. What his level is, I don't know. I alluded towards earlier, what's his best win? His best win's probably you. Um... He's been in there with the best, the best of the best. He's obviously not fought the Cobra, but I did quite a lot of rounds of sparring with Callum Smith. I always knew he was going to be a good fighter, but there is levels to the game. And um, unfortunately for him, he's around when he's fought Canelo, who's one of the best to, to operate in in the sport. And now he's been in there with um, Artur Baturbiev, and he's a monster. He's, a, he's just such a strong man and almost like, he's almost like a freak 
in terms of when he lands his power punches and he just keeps clumping away with them heavy shots. A little bit like Canelo in his, uh, not Canelo, um, Triple G in his prime when he was landing shots that looked like arm shots but having massive effect on the opponents. You're just thinking, what is he hitting him with here? Um, that's the kind of um, look he's got about him, the Turbiev. But Does he I beat Bivol, Carl? The, listen, it's a great fight, isn't it? <laughs> you know what I mean? Dimitri Bivol against Arthur Baturbiev, that is a great fight. And you could see how Bivol could outmaneuver him with his fast feet and his boxing skills and his fast hands and his fitness and keep out of his way. I don't think um, Bivol takes him on and has a dogfight with him. At times, he, he'll stand there and mix, but he'd be better off just getting on the move and being behind his slick boxing skills, his high work rate. And I think, I think if anyone could beat him, it, it, it would be Bivol. But what a great fight that is. Well, Baturbiev just, once he lands, he has an effect. And you just The question would be, can he land on Bivol and does it have the same effect that it's had with everyone else he's boxed? Um, Bivol was exceptional against Canelo, you know, where he gets his game plan set up and he sticks to it and he boxed exquisitely well. But it's a safety first approach from Bivol when you realise he, he hasn't stopped anyone in the, a long time, years and years. I mean, he stopped uh, Anthony Yard. Uh, sorry, he stopped Lyndon Arthur uh, in uh, Saudi recently. But I thought, I thought he would do a bit more of a, a demolition job on him. And if you put Lyndon Arthur in with Paterviev, then you know he, he, you think you'd just walk through him. Yeah. So I think I think you know you have to have a really good jab uh, to establish and create and maintain that distance with um Paterviev. you if you don't have that jab that keeps him busy keeps him honest keeps him out of range or at long range then he he will eventually just march you back every time smith had his back on the ropes he was in severe danger you know buddy McGirt in the corner saying just stay off the ropes stay off the ropes bivol probably much more comfortable boxing off the ropes but I think Baturviev's the favourite. You know, maybe I'm just there's recency bias there watching Baturviev at the weekend. But I think, yeah, I think Baturviev's the favourite. I'd love to see it happen. I hope it does happen. Hopefully, it happens sooner rather than later. Baturviev getting older. You know, I thought he's 30, 39 now. I thought he's actually in his forties, but he's thirty nine. He doesn't look old. <laughs> he's aging well, but we want to see that fight soon. It's talking about it happening maybe at the end of the, the Saudi season. Um, and if it does, that'll be great. I'd probably, I'd probably go with Paterviev win, but I wouldn't be confident of it, Carl. Talking about Callum Smith, where does he go from here? He, he, he said yesterday, alluded towards the fact that he's had a great career. He's got his young kids at home. I don't think he's enjoying it now like like he should be. And I think if there's ever a time to to really consider hanging up the gloves, and I, 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 I'm always conscious about saying somebody should retire because then you get a backlash and saying, who are you to tell somebody to retire? And rightly so, you're not... We're not here to tell people to retire, but we're, we're retired fighters, ex-fighters. We know how punishing it can be. And he's not had a punishing career, Callum Smith, but that was a bad loss. And he, he showed lack of motivation or ambition in the Canelo fight. He's made plenty of money. I believe he's done well at the sport. And I just think now if he, if he hangs his gloves up, he can, he can, he can be proud that he's, he's gave it his best shot and he's had a good career. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised if he retired. Does he want to return back to a lower level? Does he want to come back down to sort of a European level or fringe world title level and build himself back up? Only he knows that. Has he got the desire for that? Only he knows. So I wouldn't be surprised if he makes a decision to retire. I'm not going to tell him to. Um, but yeah, I mean, what, what do you think about that? Yeah, I can't see a lot of motivation now for, for Callum Smith to carry on boxing. Are you all right? I, I can't see. There won't be a lot of money on the table for him to come down to and fight another Brit, you know, and the world champions are Bivol and Baturviev. He's already fought Baturviev. I can't see him getting a win over Bivol. Um, that would be an aging fight that he had last night. You know, in January, out in Canada, in the cold, in the snow, to get stopped the way he did. I think that's an aging fight. And he's had a great career. You know, he's, and he's had a few few big paydays. I think he would have got paid well in the tournament. He had the Canelo fight where everyone gets paid well when they fight Canelo. So... M Money wise, he ain't gonna want to drop down to a lower level and have to have hard fights. Um, who would he fight now? UK level. You mentioned a few of them names there. Yeah, Lyndon I mean, Arthur in the mix. I mean, who would you say? Right, I think that's a good fight for Callum Smith if he wants to carry on. He's but if he, 
he's not the most marketable. You know, he's never been marketable, but he's been a good fighter. So he's going to have to fight the likes of Craig Richards, Joshua Buatzi, or Dan Aziz, whoever comes out on top of that. A yard fight could be possible. But so so the the, the good names, um, but good fighters, I think, from the UK. None of them are, are an easy night's work at all. And no. Does he want to go back down to that level? It, it'll be a frack. The money on, on the table will be a fraction of what he's got paid uh, this weekend. So I, I that's going to be so, that's going to kill the motivation. So we exactly. need the desire, and I'm not sure what the desire he's got left. Only he knows. But the post fight interview to me seemed to lack desire for the future of the sport. So yeah, we, I think we'll wait. I think we'll wait and see, won't we? Well, bro- brother, brother uh, Liam Smith, he got he got beat against uh, Eubank. Uh, and last year, he sort of is he winding up with his career? Is he coming to the end? Um, so maybe there's discussions. You know, brothers are talking and saying, "You know what? We've done well. Maybe it's the time we uh, we move on." Uh, and you'd have no no question about it. He's had a great career. He's done well. You've got to be happy with that. I'll tell you one thing that they did notice. I don't know. They made a bit of a noise uh, before the fight. Was Paterviev producing a high testosterone level in a pre-fight testing? Which mm. I don't know a lot about. Apparently, it was totally legal. But what would you make of that? Yeah, they call it an atypical finding, don't they, of um, levels of testosterone, which is basically a natural higher level of testosterone, which occurs quite frequently in explosive sports athletes, like um, I know hundred meter sprinters, for example. They'd quite often um, return high levels of natural levels of um, testosterone. But I think that. Um, Beterbiev's a typical finding of testosterone. I think a bit of a mountain was made out of a molehill here because it's not illegal. It's not an adverse finding. It's not failing a drugs test. So I just think to make a big deal out of that is a bit of um, a bit of a waste of time. I don't even know why they report it. What's the point in reporting it if it's perfectly legal? You know what I mean? It's like saying we've tested your blood and we found some blood. Do you know what I mean? It's like, well, that's obvious. So. They've found high levels of testosterone, but it's not illegal. So don't mention it because then you don't give anybody any chance to sort of say, well, there's a potentially a problem here and there's a grey area around drug testing. And then they'll lead towards other male, maybe failed drugs tests, which have nothing to do with it. You, you might know what I'm talking about. So I just think they should have left it alone, not mentioned it, but they've, they've highlighted it and just said, listen, Baturbi has a machine. He's still at nearly 40 years old. He's still got high levels of testosterone in his body. And you can see he has because he's punching hard, he's strong, he's fit, and he is pushing 40. But what are you going to do about it? We're all genetically different and we've all got different diets and we're all built a bit differently from one another. And uh, Baturvia is a bit of a machine, isn't it? a bit of a monster. So I'm not going to make anything about that. I just think it's pointless highlighting if it's not illegal. Why mention it? Well, that's just yeah. my layman's... No, I think, I think you're, you're spot on, Carl. Because the the initial headline, you're like, oh, there's been a finding. Like, you you've got to get your dictionary out to work out, is it? Yeah, what's what, going what's on? What's the rest of the word in mean? And yeah, it does make you think. Oh, he, oh, he's, they've caught. They've, he's been caught. He's been caught. Yeah. When actually, he got. There's nothing illegal about his test, and his test just says he's got high levels of testosterone. No shit. <laughs> you scratch yeah. your head. You're like, yeah. oh, the guy who stopped 20 out of 20, he punches yeah, hard. Exactly. He's got mm-hmm. a bit of testosterone in him. Yeah, okay, cool. I got you. No worries. Next week, we have two-weight world champion, Natasha Jonas, and she's defending her titles against Michaela Mayer. It's live on TalkSport. How do you see that fight going, Carl? I think it's a, a great fight, potentially close. Michaela Mayer, I like. I like her style. She's, she's a bit more of a counter-puncher. She likes to she likes to look for the counter, but she, she's a great fighter, isn't she? And um, Tasha Jonas, obviously, we saw her lose against Katie Taylor in, a, in, a, in what was a great fight. I thought it was quite close. She got beat, but it was it was a competitive fight. And um, yeah, it's a fight I'm looking forward to, to be honest. Um, one, one I'm going to stick in my diary and watch. What about you? Yeah, I think I think Jonas is, she's she's coming into uh, quite a bit of form. I think this weight is probably better suited to you know women. If an opportunity arises, they're, they're happy to move up and down. They sort of go here, there and everywhere and fights get made really quickly. But uh, Jonas is in really good form at the moment. Uh, maybe getting Mayer at the right time. Um, she's moved up now at welterweight, so she's still got a bit of weight to cut. She's got uh, a bit of natural size on Jonas. She's really tall, uh, Maya. So, but I'm looking forward to it. I think, you know, this is this is a big name. Uh, for Jonas, really, when you think about it, there's not a lot of huge names in female boxing, but 
both these ladies uh, have got big names in the sport. So it's, it's an exciting fight. I'm looking forward to it. So that's it for another episode of The Verdict. Don't forget, we'll be back next week to review the Tasha Jonas, Michaela Mayer fight on a Sunday. We'll have a Sunday morning verdict review. In the meantime, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to this channel. See you next time.